Good morning, students. So, welcome back to our physics class. And in this class, we are going to continue the chapter sound. So, in the previous classes, we have discussed about sound, the, image, uh, the type of waves that is produced by a sound. We have learned the sources of sound, and then we have discussed the propagation of sound. That sound requires a medium to travel. And if there is no medium, if there is vacuum, then sound cannot travel from one place to another place. Okay. Now in this place, in this class, since we have already learned that sound is produced due to the vibration of the object or due to the vibration of the particles, we will going to talk about the characteristics of sound waves. So actually what happens, sound travels in the form of wave. And there is actually a disturbance that has been created okay, in the medium. So let us talk about the characteristics of sound waves. What are the different, different characteristics? So first of all, we should know what is wave. A wave is formed by a continuous disturbance in a medium. So if in a medium there is some continuous disturbance, and the particles are vibrating about the mean position, and the energy is being traveled from one place to the place, then such kind of disturbance is known as wave. Now, in order to describe a wave, we generally use the terms frequency, time period, and amplitude. So, these are the three important terms which we are going to study, which is related to the characteristic of sound wave, that is frequency, time period, and amplitude. So, before beginning, let us come to this uh, graph. That is a figure where we can understand about the waves. Now suppose we know that the particles are always in their mean position. Okay, when the particles are not moving, they are rest, and they are at rest position, they will going to stay at their particular position. And their particular position, their rest position is actually known as mean position. Now suppose one mean position is over here, one particle is present over here. And some force has been applied to this particle, some disturbance has been created on this particle. So this particle will start vibrating up and down like this. Or it can vibrate in forward and upward direction. So over here I have shown the wave in the form of upward and downward direction. So the particle will start vibrating up and down. When the particles are going to move in the upward direction, it will reach to a position, then it will return back to its actual position and it will come down like this. Then again it will going to go back to its mean position, then it will going to come to its extreme position. Suppose the point was present at mean position M. And due to disturbance, it has reached to one of the extreme position A. Then again it will come back to its mean position. Now since the wave is being shown and moving in the forward direction because the time is changing, and with respect to time, the wave should be moving in forward direction. So what will happen? The particles will going to vibrate from its mean position to point A, then the particle will go back to its mean position and then the particle will go to another position that is B position. Then particle will come back to another B position, to its own B position, then again particle will vibrate on the upper side. When the particle goes on the upper side, it is known as crest. And when the particle goes in the downward side, it is known as trough. Okay, so the particle is vibrating up and down, that is in the crest and trough, forward and backward, or you can say to and fro motion. Okay, if you remember in the previous class we had discussed when the particles come closer, they are known as they are getting compressed. When the particles go away from each other, that means particles get rarefied. Suppose over here the particles have come closer. So when the particles have come closer, that is compression. What is known as compression. And after coming back to the position again, they will go away from each other. So that will be known as rarefaction. So once the particles will go away, or you, you can say that if they will come closer, then they will go away, then they will again come closer, again they will go away. So when they are coming closer, that is forming compression. When they are going away from each other, that is forming rarefaction. Now, the particle was at its peak position and it has move from point M to point A. So the maximum displacement it has covered either on the upper side or either in the lower side. So from M to A or from M to B, the maximum displacement 
displacement that is being done by the particle about its spin position that is known as its amplitude. Suppose you take a elastic band, a rubber band or a spring and then you stretch that rubber band and you release it. So when you stretch it and you release it, it will go into vibrate with this, isn't it? So from its spin position, it is moving to one of the extreme positions, then it comes back to its spin position, then it goes to another extreme position. So this maximum displacement from the mean position to its extreme position is known as amplitude. So the maximum displacement of a wave on either side of its mean position, that is from the mean position to any of the extreme position, the maximum displacement that can be seen in a wave is known as its amplitude. And the SI unit of amplitude is meter. Because it is a distance and distance is always measured in meter. Okay. So the maximum displacement of a wave on either side of the mean position, that is from the mean to its extreme position, position in a position B, that maximum displacement is known as amplitude, then frequency. Now you can see that the particle which was present to my eye, it has gone to one of the extreme position, then returned back to its mean position and then it went to another extreme position. So this whole cycle is actually one cycle or one wave, okay? It means it has completed one wave from here, then again it has converted one wave. So this is one wave, this is second wave. So what is frequency? Let us talk about frequency. It is the number of vibrations. Number of vibrations means one to and four motion. One compression, one wave action. Or one crash or one drop. Together they are known as one wave. So it is the number of vibrations or number of waves produced or completed by waves in one second. So how many vibrations has been produced or completed by a wave in one second? That is known as frequency. And it is denoted by letter F. And the SI unit of frequency is, this SI unit is Hertz. Hertz is the standard unit for measuring frequency. And the formula to calculate frequency is F is equals to 1 upon T. The formula to calculate frequency is F is equals to 1 upon T. Frequency is equals to 1 upon time period. T means time period. Please remember this formula which is useful for calculating the frequency. So in simple terms you can say that frequency means number of vibrations produced by a wave in one second. Or number of vibrations produced by or completed by a wave in one second which is related by letter F and its SI unit is Hertz. Now the next term comes time period. The time period of a wave is the time taken by a wave to complete one cycle. Like suppose from here the wave has started and it has completed one cycle till here. So when completing this one cycle it has consumed some time. So the time that has been taken by this wave to complete one cycle is known as time period. It is related by letter T, capital T, and its SI unit is second. Not one second actually. It is second. So the SI unit of time period is second. And with relation to this formula, you can calculate frequency or time period. So this is the relationship between frequency and time period that F is equal to 1 upon so some numericals you can do with the help of this formula. So this is about the characteristics of sound waves. This is a wave formation when it is forming a compression or manufacturing. Sometimes compression or manufacturing is also known as press or drop. Okay, and these are three terms which you have to learn. Okay. Now let us take one example. Okay, so that we can learn how to solve the numericals based on frequency and time period relation. The frequency of a sound wave is 20 hertz. So first of all, what is given the question? Frequency that is written by F is 20 hertz. So the frequency of the sound wave is given 20 hertz. And the time period we have to calculate. This is the time period that is ordered by T that is have to calculate. So we know that the relationship between frequency and time period is F is equal to 1 upon T. 
Okay, this T is divided over F. It will come the second multiplier. So you can write like this F into T is equal to 1 or T is equal to 1 upon F. Now you have to calculate time. So it will become 1 upon F. So this we have just reciprocal. So 1 upon F. So 1 upon what is frequency? 20 hertz. Now when you divide 1 upon 20, it will become 0 0.05 You have to divide it by 20 So you get the 0 0.05 Sorry Second, so this is the time period of This sound wave So time period Simply divide 1 upon Okay, so this is how You can solve simple numericals Which are based on time period and frequency 